I'm Michelle from the Cincinnati Zoo, and today's home safari we're going to talk about tigers, which just so happens to be my favorite, so everybody buckle up because I have a lot of cool facts for you. Here we have Malayan tigers at the zoo. They are actually the second smallest species of tiger. Uh, they get to be about seven to eight feet long and anywhere between 200 to 300 pounds. We have three tigers here. They're all Malayan and they're all sisters. These guys were born February 3rd, 2017, so they just turned three this year. Uh, the tiger life expectancy is about 15 to 20 years old, so these guys in my mind are still just babies. Here we have Batari. Uh, she's enjoying a nice blood popsicle. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a nice frozen treat made of blood that the tigers seem to really enjoy. Batari, I would say, is our most playful tiger that we have here at the zoo. And when I say playful, I mean she loves enrichment. Enrichment is our way of mental, mentally st stimulating our animals. It can be with toys, scents, different food items, all sorts of different things that we rotate and try to get a nice variety for them. Next, we have our sister, Kyra. She's actually not out in this yard. She's in the yard next door. This is because tigers are solitary animals. So in the wild, they're never together except for breeding. And when a mom has cubs, the cubs are only with her for about two years. And then they also go off on their own if <laughs> she is chasing it. So Kyra is our epileptic tiger, but because we have such an amazing vet staff, they actually found a great combination of medicine for her. And next month she will be one year seizure free, which is awesome. So we're gonna have to throw a little, little party for Kyra to celebrate. I would say Kyra is our chuffiest tiger. Uh, a chuff is a happy tiger noise. Tigers cannot purr, so they chuff instead. I always try to imitate it. It's like a, a f kind of noise. It's really terrible example, but you might be able to YouTube that and find something better. Izzy is the next sister that we have. She's our smartest and most stubborn tiger. She really picks up husbandry training great, but she only participates when she wants to, which I mean is a typical cat, right? Uh, so what kind of husbandry training do you guys think we do with the tigers? It's basically any behavior that helps lower the stress of our animals. Um, our tigers can show us their paw and we can check out their nails. They open their mouths and we can check out their teeth. And all of our tigers are actually voluntary injection trained and blood drawn trained too. So anytime their annual vaccines come around, our tigers voluntarily push their hip up to the mesh. They hold nice and still to get their shot and then they get an awesome meaty treat afterwards. So something they really enjoy. It's about the same as if you go to the doctor and get a shot and then you might get a lollipop after. Same thing, but tigers like the big meat treats. So let's actually look at Batari a little bit closer. If you look, it's hard to tell while she's eating that popsicle, but she has about three inch long canine teeth. And even though her nails are out right now, she has about three to four inch long claws. Those are gonna help her take down her prey items. Even her tongue, as she's licking that blood pop, the roughness of her tongue is actually little tiny hooks on the end of it that help pull off the meat from the bones so then she gets every last scrumptious bite of food, which Batari is all about food. Next, if you look at her eyes, as she's, of course she's squinting, but they have round pupils. If you guys take a look at your house cat at home, they have nice vertical slits for eyes but a characteristic of big cats, they have nice round pupils. This helps them see in the daytime, but more specifically at night. So these guys are nocturnal. They're gonna do most of their hunting at night, which means they have amazing night vision. Then look at her ears. These guys have amazing hearing. I would say hands down, that's the best sense that they have. These guys can rotate their ear. You already see her pointing them back a little bit. Now she's pointing them forward perfectly on cue. Thank you, Batari. So these guys can rotate their ears around and it helps them to pinpoint prey anywhere in a thick, dense jungle, which is just incredible. Now, if you're looking at the back of the ears, there's that beautiful white spot on there. This is called a cell eye. It's considered to be a fake eye on the tiger. So imagine an animal walks up behind the tiger, just like we are right now. You see those white spots staring at you. They think it's a tiger staring them down and they're gonna leave it alone even though it's actually the back of the tiger's head. So it works most of the time. Uh, and then, as you guys know, what are tigers most famous for? Those beautiful black stripes. 
So if you guys can believe it, this is actually a form of camouflage. It's really hard to believe right now. Looking at her, she's this bright orange tiger. Of course, you can see her very easily, but you have to think about their natural habitat, which is a thick, dense jungle. So when the light hits the trees, it's really bright, and then the shadows behind the trees are really dark. So therefore, you get the striping effect. Tiger stripes are unique to every individual tiger, just like fingerprints are. So Malayan tigers are found in central and southern parts of the Malay Peninsula in southern Thailand. These guys are the top of the food chain, so they pretty much eat whatever they can catch, which includes deer, boar, sun bears, taper, and even young elephants. But even though these guys are the top of the food chain, there are threats for tigers, which include deforestation, human development, and poaching. So Kyra, Batari, and Izzy, here at the zoo, they all serve as ambassadors for their wild counterparts, which as I just said, they aren't doing that well in the wild. In the past 100 years, tiger population has declined by 96%. Our hope here at the zoo is that as you get to know Batari, she'll inspire you to help conserve tigers. One easy way to do this is to support organizations that are accredited by the AZA. That's the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. An AZA accreditation ensures that an institution meets the highest standards of animal care, as well as contributes to conservation and education. So the Cincinnati Zoo is AZA accredited and in recent years has donated to Panthera's Tiger Forever program, which, leads, which, which works with local agencies to end tiger poaching prevent human-tiger conflicts, and helps protect the prey item's natural habitat. Another way you guys at home can help tigers is to buy products that use sustainable palm oil. Palm oil is found in almost everything in your home. I actually challenge you today, go ahead and look through your house, try to find different items with ingredients of palm oil. It can be cookies, candy, shampoo, and even lipstick. So pretty much everything in your house. Palm oil is a major factor in de deforestation but there are sustainable businesses that farm it responsibly. And if you guys wanna look up some sustainable companies that have palm oil, just ask Google. So now if we have time, we're gonna take some questions. Yeah. Marva wants to know, how did she get her name, Kyra? Kyra, that's a great question. So Kyra, when she was born, she actually landed weird on her neck and she was holding it at a funny angle. So it was the first time that I know of that the zoo has asked a specialized chiropractor to come to the zoo. He worked all sorts of different procedures on Kyra and after that she started eating better, she started holding her head right, and she started developing like a normal tiger. So in honor of the chiropractor that helped her, her name is Kyra for chiropractor. Christina um, actually asked an interesting question about why do we have these dots on the glass? These dots are here to help prevent bird strikes. So as much as we love all of our animals at the zoo and we wanna see them, we wanna make sure that the birds are nice and safe. So this is just a way that we can visually impact the window and then the birds don't hit it. Laura asked, do all tigers have stripes? There are a couple that have different uh, genetic variations that cause them to be actually all black, which is one giant tiger stripe. There's a word for it and it's failing me right now, but it, it can happen. It's just a genetic, genetic deformity. Andrea wanted to know, are there stripes also on their skin or is it just on their fur? I love that question. Thank you. It's actually on their skin. <laughs> I didn't know that until we had to shave a little spot on the tiger to get a blood draw and there, were, there it was, there's a stripe on the skin. <laughs> Leo asked, what's the largest prey that they can take down in the wild? So from what I've read, they can take down young elephants. I don't know exactly how young, but that to me is still very big. So I'm gonna say that. Joe wants to know, do they live in groups or are they solitary? So tigers are solitary. So we have three tigers here, but they're all out at different times because in the wild, after they leave their mom of about two years old, they're off on their own and they only come together with another tiger for breeding season. Helen wants to know how many babies do they have at a time? Great question. These guys have about three to four babies at one time and the gestation period is about 100 to 105 days. Zach wanted to know what is their favorite enrichment? It depends on the individual. Um, 
these guys all like different things. I'd say Batari's favorite enrichment is different toys. She loves being able to knock them down, chase them. Um, Izzy would probably be food. And Kyra loves different smells. She loves just rolling around on them. Kate asked, is it unusual for a tiger to have epilepsy? I've never heard of it, but uh, I have heard of a case in the Pittsburgh Zoo where a lion has epilepsy. So I wouldn't say it's uncommon or common. I just haven't heard of it very much. Lily asked, do they ever eat turtles? I, I am not sure <laughs> if these guys eat turtles. I bet if they found one in the wild and it was just sitting there, they would probably take the chance. She's not interested. She wants her blood popsicle. I don't mind. That was a fail. <laughs> Ava asked, is their fur soft or is it coarse? It is coarse. They look like they'd be nice and soft and fluffy, but they are not. <laughs> Maya asked, do they have any predators in the wild? These guys are the top of the food chain in their environment, so they do not have predators other than people and deforestation. Priya asked, what is their best sense? I'd say their best sense is their hearing. Um, they, I mean, obviously have a lot of great adaptations, but the hearing, they can be able to pinpoint prey items in a thick, dense jungle, which is just incredible. Promise asked, how many pounds of food do they eat a day? These guys get about five pounds of food a day. We, ha we give them raw hamburger, but we also give them prey items too to help imitate a natural diet. So these guys will get uh, rabbits, guinea pigs, all sorts of things, but I'd say it equals out about five pounds. Charlotte asked, do they swim ever? Great question. Tigers are the anomaly of cats and they love swimming. So these guys actually do have webbed feet and they are great swimmers and they love it. Jeremiah asked, what's their gestation period? Their gestation period is between 100 to 105 days. Now our last question is from Hudson. What is their very favorite food? Again, I think their favorite food depends on the tiger, but I have seen none of our tigers turn down a rabbit. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us on today's home safari. We'd love for you guys to click the link for today's activity, which is wild art. So we know now that Malayan tigers are famous for the orange fur with the black stripes. So we want you to use whatever you have available to recreate the tiger's stripe patterns. And then we want you to upload your masterpiece for Batari to check out to see if you use hashtag Zoo Home Safari. Thanks guys, stay healthy and stay happy.